graph for me is I don't sketch. I don't really do it. I'm all about getting to that spot. Like, I like to live in that moment and how I got there is what. If I'd done an amazing piece on the ground, but then I'd done some absolute crazy thing to get up onto the spot, I prefer the thing I done at the top right. rather than at the bottom. <laughs> and if it's on top, then bonus. Yeah, mate, on top. But when you're getting on top at the end of the night, yeah, mate, that's it's all good. Especially when you get away. It, Dude, that, no that, 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 that's the cherry on the top. Yeah, mate, I don't really care what it looks like. I'm about that. I got to that spot. Really? Would you yeah. say you're a bomber? You're like more of a bomber? No, I'm a vandal. KellerKellerOfficial.com. You need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Lad! <laughs> Hurry up, lad! <laughs> oh, man. Here we go. All right, ready? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be, choose to be, want to be, desired to be, you don't want to be anywhere else, trust me. Big shout out to the sharers and carers and everyone that's been supporting the podcast from the last 400 episodes plus. It doesn't go unnoticed or whatever number you're at, whatever time of the year you jump on and discover us. Big shout out to yourselves as well. Hold tight to everyone has got the Television app, free download, iPhone, Android, free street culture, sports, whether it's mini docs, full docs, DJ mixes, or the notorious podcast, we got you. Um, big shout out to our sponsors, the mighty Hoddle Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys Hideout. That's some NFT business for you um, and yo inside the house today we are in for a right treat Southwestern's finest if you don't know about the Southwest then you're about to get to know rummaging deeps in the furrows is on one inside the place thank you for having me mate on some gully shit right now <laughs> yeah, trust mate. I said to him yeah so you were uh, you're coming back from work are you you just finished work you know been late in the afternoon and you get and what did you what did you say to me Mate, we got that fucking work with us, innit we? Show us what you have. <laughs> Show us what you have. So far as work. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> no joke. He came for bed. He ain't, he ain't staying around here for too long, so you got him for a brief hot minute. How are you, my brother? How well, I'm are you? I'm not too bad, mate. How's it going? It's a privilege to have on here. Yeah, you man. I mean? I mean, listen, without question, we're talking the darker sides of Southwest. Right now, it's happening. To be honest, it's just just get out there and do it. Like it's it's just a love for doing it. Like all I can say is just, like, I like to be out there. I'm a person who likes to get out and going. Mm. All I want to do is just get out there, just put my name up. <laughs> but there's a certain tone to you kind of characters. And for those of you that are listening and not watching, uh on one is 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 one of those kind of unique uh prospects of people that definitely have got like a real sense of urgency it's almost like an ADHD that's going on here G. like you this is your thing it's like, like is this like your outlet to 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 get out and be painting is yeah. that a thing to be honest the harder times get the more I paint it is my way of when times get hard it's my release really yeah because in the day I like to be out there I'm not a person I don't like to sit in my house <laughs> so I like to be out there and do it so the harder times are the more I go out there and do it how because, often do you go out painting? Yeah. Well, I think about, well, not last week, the week before. I've been out two weeks. I've been out every night. <laughs> because, yeah, I was going through some hard times, so I went out every fucking night. <laughs> and that's part of the protocol. Because for anyone that has not, Bear witness to on one, um, and even as a person, he's he's such a gracious, you know, happy, you know, life loving character. It's 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 hard to imagine that you you have to go and do painting to resolve some not demons, but just to kind of get yourself back on the straight and narrow. Is that yeah? That, is, to be honest, when it comes to graffiti, my chill place is graffiti. Like if I'm going through hard times, I will go. I'll do it. I'll get my fucking head straight. So it's like meditation, like a, is it a level yeah, of... Yeah, for me, it's a certain... It's like some people meditate, for example. That's how they deal with stuff. 
a lot of times how I deal with stuff is by I go out and I will climb something or I'll do something and it sounds a bit mad if I'm climbing something. That's when I'm at my best place and that's when I'm most chilled out. <laughs> definitely no mean feet, I swear to God. <laughs> Not suggesting that I've been in any way uh, the unsafe state that uh, a lot of writers are to go and paint, but I've been in scenarios where I've thought to myself, I can't do this. I can't, I can't, I can't do that and then do this. It's a lot. And I would imagine for anybody that doesn't have the uh, elasticity, tenacity to do to do that, that's a lot of energy, bro. That's a lot of energy you've got to have stored to allow for the end result. And you're not, ha- and we've talked, there's not just one end result, there's like a barrage of like other results. That's how, where's that come from? Um, it's just come from when I first started doing graffiti as a kid, and it's one of my outlets is that was the one place that I feel most chilled out. Like, although I'm doing some crazy stuff at times, but that is the time when I feel most chilled and I can think straight the best in my life. So the harder times get and I do crazy stuff, I can think straight and I come back and I lose myself in it. And at that moment and afterwards, I feel good and I can actually think more straight than I can. How often do you lose yourself in it? (sighs) Pretty much every time I go out graphing. (laughs) <laughs> this, is where, this is where the missus calls up and she's just like yeah she, he's not been home for five days <laughs> is, oh, that a, is that a reality is oh that a thing? oh mate one of my exes was point blank accused me of cheating because I was out graphing so much and then to be fair she could, I went out the house graphing constantly for months she accused me of cheating thought I was cheating then she drive down the North Cirque and then she and there you the, are no, <laughs> then she caught the train and then she went on the motorways and she said Do you know what I know you're not cheating on me anymore. <laughs> wow. I don't think I've ever been accused of something from doing something. But I guess it's a really private affair, isn't it? It's between you and the, the surface. Yeah, to be honest, with with that situation, she was concerned because she thought I might fall off and die and I'll get it by a train, for example, or something would go wrong. Yeah. So I didn't keep her in the loop too much because... Yeah, you know, it's how it is. But your parents would do that as well, right? Is that is, is, that, a, is that yeah a... yeah? The other, I've gone through a lot of dramas from when it comes to the graffiti side of things, but I do it because I love doing it and it is a passion to me and I cannot stop doing it. So I'm going to do it no matter what. To a, lot of, to a lot of people outside of like the graph world, like musicians, a lot of artists and musicians and all the likes watch this sort of thing, and I think that you know, there's a lot of. Um, I think it's quite spellbinding, the idea of, like, somebody being totally, like, devoted to that the singular genre of, of graph and, and taking it to its fucking limit. It, I believe there's... There, I mean, just going back to the ADHD side of things, there's, I think there is something in it, like, where, from a conditional point of view, you, you, you're taking it to the excess. In the same way a scratch DJ... Has to be on the spectrum to be so fucking amazing what they do. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do get it. Like ADHD wise, I've got ADHD. Like I've got a lot of energy, and it is one way that I can push it, and I push it more to the limits because for me, I'm a person who likes to push myself to the ultimate of what mm. I can do. For example, I remember I had it with a family member told me when it comes to doing the motorway signs and doing this, first time I've ever done it, he said, if you keep doing the motorway signs, he's like, you will get nicked, the feds will be on you. He said, so you, you, you can't keep doing that. So I started doing it more because I was like, well, if you tell... <laughs> ultimately, like... Oh, you don't me... like that, do you? I'll just fucking turn this shit up a little bit more. <laughs> you know, like I like to push myself. If someone tell me I can't do something, I'll do it more. Yeah, because I know. I, I like noticed to push myself, dude. I, I noticed when I said no, you can't do past the the, the board in tagging. You're just like, no, can I just do the side? Just like, Where's that fucking come from, bro? Like, is that is that just a, is is it a hereditary thing? Has there ever been? Has there anything like that has led to this this point where it's like I'm going to take it to the next level? I'm a person of as in I like to push myself. I like to be out of my comfort zone, so I will push it to as much as I absolutely can. So my comfort zone, I like to be beyond that. And 
that's why I like to push it. And I do the, do the same with graph. And I like to be out of my comfort zone. It's the, way, the best way to put What's it. That, tell me some other comfort, comfort zones that you like to be out of that are outside of graph. Um, when it comes to motorbikes, so I'm into motorbikes. Oh, I try. Oh. <laughs> you get I, I, for that. That's fine. Like, right. I push myself and... Yeah, without going too in depth into things, but like I like to push myself. So, so. you're a big motorbike bike fan, you? Yeah, oh, mate, I'm big into motorbikes. Like I had the same thing with Graf that I had with motorbikes. Really? My fam, my family told me, do not ride motorbikes, and I was like, do you know what? Does not matter. I'm doing it anyway. People told me because they're like, we know what you like. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I'm doing it anyway, so I will push myself. And yeah, you know what I mean. I'm still here, so could be worse. <laughs> Dude, you're such a fat. I, mean, I hope this is resonating right now, gentlemen. When, oh, by the way, we've got we've got Subber inside the place. Hold tight, Subber inside the place. You good? Yeah, good. He's there, he's in the room. Hold tight, Subber. Um, uh, where did it all begin, pal? Where did where did it all begin for you? Um, to be fair, it all began when I was about thirteen, fourteen, and. I was out and about and went in Waterstones, just being little kids at that age. Nicked a fucking um, book of Subway art and, yeah, looked at the Subway art and was like, ooh, like, yeah, I like that. And also I've been on the trains as a kid as well and I've seen, like, seen people up and I was thinking, how the hell did they get to there? Mm. Like, how did you get to that spot? Like, How? And then, yeah, when I had that book, and that's where it started for me. And from there, I just never looked back. <laughs> I think never a, lot of back. a lot of people resonate with that. You know, the fact that this book was ever present in day-to-day -day living and, and it was just there to be discovered, that was just something so fucking enlightening, wasn't it? Yeah, that book is, it's like a Bible because a lot of people I've, a lot of graphers I've met in my life, that book was the first time they've ever realised because you realise that, like, wow, we get on trains and people are putting this artwork on the trains. Mm. It's just, especially as a young kid, it's mm. amazing. Mm. Like, you cannot beat it. It's, yeah, it's, it's a different sort of feeling. And I thought, that is a bit of me. Really and once is. I started it, and then, yeah, it went from there. And this is what I got to. <laughs> <laughs> big up spat, by the way. Big hold tight spat. Cool spat. One T in them. Um, where did it? Where did it actually? Where did it actually get to the point where you were wanting to road test what you were doing and taking it to the, uh, to, the to the to the trains and to the walls and? Um, when I was about fourteen, fifteen, when I first started, I was like, I just want to do as much as I can, and I and for me, a big thing is I remember as a kid thinking, how did they get there, mm. and. That's why I was like, I want to get to that spot where you cannot get to. Mm. That is what it means to me. Like, that's what I remember thinking as a kid. And that's kind of the way I do what I is do. It more, is it more about how to get there rather than what the end result is? Yeah, 100%. Is it? For me, it's all about getting to the place and having that memory of how I got there and remember when we climbed that, we jumped this thing, then we cut an hole through there and then we got to there and that's how we got to the rooftop. It's more about, for me, I'm all about, for me, it means more to me the spot rather than what it looks like. Really? I've never heard anyone say that before. Yeah, that's, for me, that's, that's what graph means to me. Is about... Elaborate more on that. So imagine that you, it all got on top real quick. And then you're, you're, is that also part of the... Oh, yeah. If it got on top and then we took a chase and we got away, for me, that's a good night. Really? That, yeah, because the memory, I'm about, I'm about living in that moment and all about that. I'm more about where I got to. I prefer to get to a really good spot up there and then rather than doing something on the ground and doing something that looks absolutely amazing, I'm more about the spot. Really? Yeah, because you get the memory of how you got there, you worked out how to get there, you went through this, you cut your leg up on barbed wire and blah, blah, blah. Like I, live in, I like to live in that moment. But what about from a Star Wars perspective of, of style? Um, not, like, for me, 
graph for me is I don't sketch. I don't really do it. I'm all about getting to that spot. Like, I like to live in that moment and how I got there is what. If I'd done an amazing piece on the ground, but then I'd done some absolute crazy thing to get up onto the spot, I prefer the thing I done at the top right. rather than at the bottom. <laughs> and if it's on top, then bonus. Yeah, mate, on top. But when you're getting on top at the end of the night, yeah, mate, that's it's all good. Especially when you get away. Dude, it, that, no that, 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 that's the cherry on the top. No wonder your missus has a fucking hurry, bro. Like it's fucking full on. Okay, so okay, on a ratio of one and hundred, fifty percent. Is that fifty-fifty uh, graph versus obstacles, or would you say it was more? 70% obstacles and 30%. 80% obstacles, 20% what really? it looks like. Yeah, mate, I don't really care what it looks like. I'm about that I got to that spot. Really? Would you yeah. say you're a bomber? You're like more of a bomber? No, I'm a vandal. Vandal? At the end of the day. Yeah, because I don't sketch, I don't really do much. Like, I'm about this spot. And it's adrenaline, isn't it? Yeah, I'm an adrenaline junkie. Like, I like adrenaline, and for me, it's about that pushing myself to as much as I can do. How quick do you want that adrenaline? Oh mate, that's that's why I like tagging, bombing, throw ups because you get that, you get that hit constantly. Like I like to do stuff when it's bait because how bait? Like bait? No mask bait? Is that more? No, than no, no. I throw a mask on while I do stuff bait, but I want like for example motorway signs. That's why I kind of got into the motorway signs because of one of my exes sort of whinging at me, and I'd been looking at doing them anyway, mm. and then. I was getting stick because I was going out constantly and I said I'd be back in an hour and I'd rock back up in the next morning. <laughs> and then I saw the mic with signs. I went up and done one and I said, fuck it, I fancy doing one of them. And I went up there and I was like, ooh, I like that. And then, yeah, because when you're up on the mic with sign and you climb up on the beams, everyone's watching you. And there is no hiding when you're on the beams and you're doing the top of the signs. There is no, there is no, there is no hiding. And then with that, I was doing it night time. And then I got bored doing it during the night because I weren't getting a, like, a buzz from it anymore. So I done one during the middle of the day, and that was <laughs> that was one of the like that was so, sober at the moment. Sober is like over there just like <laughs> smirking away, like yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he might be thinking, oh, I don't know what's coming after this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> panic on his face. <laughs> yeah, because I'm curious as a, as a because obviously. Graph is part of your DNA. But I'm thinking, like, if you were to remove graph, what would be the um what would be the other end result? Because what I think what we're up, what we're looking at here is somebody that that by um by default wants to just antagonize, get up at, at, at all costs, reach over things that he shouldn't do. The fact that he puts his name on it, he'll put his name on it afterwards, is is actually, of course, the winning result. But 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 uh, d- like, does that define? Is that definably you as a graph writer, or is that you as a thrill seeker? It's a mixture. Um, but for me, I do. The reason I do graffiti is like, I'm like my, my end result is I like to do it for the buzz and for the adrenaline. I'm an adrenaline junkie. Mm. And for graph, it's a love and it's an addiction that I have. And yeah, that's why I do it. So mm. it's a case of, I'm not about as much what it looks like as I prefer getting to that spot that was hard to get to. Mm. That will mean more to me than doing something that is amazing. Is that more to you than anything? Yeah. The, the idea of like yeah. getting to to that place. Yeah. Get that moment and living in that moment of I've just climbed this and I've had to go through this mm. and climb up on that and yeah, that's what means the most to me because hence the reason I don't I don't sketch like I haven't sketched in like two years. That and living that living in the moment thing is is I I know this is held dearly with a lot of writers because. Um, Southwest is a far cry from North Weezy. Hold tight, North Weezy. I, I noticed your your watches were both going backwards in time, and, and glasses were breaking <laughs> as soon as you went up. <laughs> but yeah, you know I mean, it's like I think those moments in time that you have in any borough, and that moment becomes in in of entitlement that is totally your moment, and it's just 
living in that moment and knowing that it's there for you. At what point do those moments that are just there for you suddenly become all city? Like, you, you have the... It, that's like a daily operation. You have these little moments in all these different places and before you know it... Is that, is that a thing? Do you think deep like that? To be honest, I never really plan to get where I've got to in the graph as in where I've got to, I would just, I graph for myself at the end of the day because I like to see my graph. I like to live in that moment. Yeah. And, like, I've worked a job in the past where I used to work all over the country. When I used to be in Wales, I used to just go there. I'd tell the people I work with when we stay in a hotel, I'd tell them, look, I'm have a couple of drinks and I'm getting out. Like, mm. And then we used to work country-wise and it's, I'd go out and I'd, do my thing and walk the tracks or do the motorways, wherever, wherever I fancy doing at that moment in time, I would do it because I like to live. I just like to be there and live in that moment and graph and I just like to live in that moment. <laughs> so you'll finish your fade job in your work and then rather than going out and getting on, the, well, you'll probably get on the lash, but after the, you know, 2.30 lock off, you'll go and... Oh, I'm fucking, I'm going in, I'm going out, I'm doing it. I'm just Yeah, gonna... to be fun, to be fair, I had a funny one with work that like, I used to work with. We used to work the country and then we was finished a job in, say, Wales. We finished at like two in the morning, and then, like we did the night shift and we had to drive back towards London. We all jumped in our vans because we had our own vans. I've left before them lot, hammering it down the motorway. I've seen a spot, pulled off at the junction, come off, jumped on onto the hard shoulder was slapping a normal one for me and then done that. I've come off the I've come off the motorway, got back in my van, dude they worked with was like, oh, have you seen the guy? Did you see the guy on the side of the motorway that was doing graffiti? I was like nah, I, I was I was that. like I was like, no, he must have been like he must have been like after I went past it. And there was like, oh yeah, so I'm doing graffiti. It's on the hard shoulder. I was like, ooh, I don't know who that was. I don't know about that. <laughs> and then, like, Not to do and, me. And then, like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's an addiction, isn't it? Like, once you've got an addiction to something, it's my worst addiction at the end of the day. It's the thing I'm most addicted to. Really? Yeah, I can't help it. I do it before work. I do it on the way to work. I do it after work. Wintertime's my favourite because I can do stuff at night time when it's dark on my way home from work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. just how it is. Like once you got once you got a certain buzz for something, like a certain buzz and a certain addiction to it, it's like I can't ever see my else can't see myself stop graphing ever. If I'm honest, I had a break for a couple of years when I was like, "How's that for you?" To be honest, at the time, didn't really realise. Then I started graphing again after like three years, and I was like, "Do you know what? I'm never doing it, mate. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be out there in my wheelchair and still graphing." Mm. Mm. Like now, now that I've now that I had that little break for a couple of years. Now I'll come back and then I'll come back to it. Yeah, never. It's not never stop. Some people do. Some people do start and stop. And I often think to myself, is that part of a um, a program to try and um, you know we all stop drinking. We do. We stop for you know three weeks to to a month if we're lucky. <laughs> and the same thing with other other activities. But you know, do we do we really feel whole without it? No, no, for me, graph is, it's, it's ingrained in me. It's part of me. Like, it's a thing that I will never stop at the end of the day. So it's a case of, yeah, I can never stop it. Like, I can't, I can't imagine, I had, I had that break, because obviously they nabbed me for it and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. That's, an, that's another story. Mm -hmm. um, but now, that'll start again. Talk to, yeah. about, talk to me about that story. What, what's that other story? It, it, it's a case of, they... They nabbed me for another tag, like before, obviously, before the on one. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, I just used to purely tag for however many years. And they nicked me for a fair amount of damage in one bar without all the other boroughs. And yeah, it happened. And then I met a girl, I stopped graphing for a little bit because I thought, oh, because you know, I, you know the way she went on. And I, have stuff. Be, I have to, be, I have to be uh, dignified. I, I can't be <laughs> ducking out at three thirty in the morning. I'd be disappointed. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, that, to be honest, I look back and I think, yeah, do you know what? I'd never do that again. Does that take? Does that though? Um, you know, if you what's that? Oh, okay, yeah, get it, get it. Get it. 
Yeah, 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 check it, check it on them. Um, oh, it's all, all good, all good. This is good. This is wicked. Isn't it? Um, what, so when... Right, so when she, when your girlfriend... When, when a girlfriend says, right, you got a fucking wheel up on that, what's your first feelings? To be honest, back then, because I was a lot younger... Yeah, I was like, yeah, no, I shouldn't really do it. Now, to be honest, when I got a bird, me and Graf come with it, innit? Like, it comes to it, like, the ex after her, started graphing again. I'd be like, bosh, like, I'm going out, it's 8 o'clock, for example, 8 p.m. I'd be like, yeah, I'm going out for an hour, bosh, I'm just going to just gonna do a couple things, I'll be back. And then, got a lot of stick sometimes, because really? I'd be like, yeah, it's 8 p.m., I'm saying, look, I'm going out for an hour, I'll come back home at about oh, five, half six in the morning, mm -hmm. run in, like, where's my work here? I need to go work. Da, 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 da. When it comes to it, graph is me, innit? You mm. deal with it or you don't like it. If you don't like it, like, me and you ain't being together, innit? Like, <laughs> end of the day, you deal with me going out graphing or you don't. That's so, right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's all, like, you know what I mean? It's ingrained in me. Like, it's a case of, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm yeah. me, you know? So, like, that is part of me. So, I have my, I have my characters like you. Do you ever feel like there's a... Because, you know, when it comes to painting, it's a personal thing. And if you're, if you're outwardly active like that and you actually don't give a fuck... Because, like, obviously, the first thing is, like, you're, you're doing... You're, 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 you're getting to these reaches and places where no-one else would want to go or, or you, it's more of a personal thing where you want to get to it because you've seen it. It's like, I fucking... I value the fact that you... I value the fact that you don't have any fear, even for your uh, relationship status or um, family status, you're, it's just, it's a real, because I think a lot of people out there listening right now, there's a certain um, ceiling that, that people hit where it's like, oh no, I've got to consider this. But you don't have a lot of ceiling. <laughs> Not a graph for me. Because ultimately, the best thing in the world is when I go past my graph, that's why I graph for me. Well, so, you see it and you're like, yo, yeah, that's man. Fine. I'm like, bosh, I remember that moment. Like, I remember that. Like, mm. and I graph for me. At the end of the day, I'm not doing it for no one else. It's nice to get appreciated. Mm. For example, coming on here, it's nice to have that appreciation. But ultimately, graph for me is. Dude, I'm I be... love seeing my own graph. We won't, we, won't get, we won't get to his original names, but I'm telling you now, I remember you from back in the day, bro. I've got there's <laughs> amples of time right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you that in the, yeah, yeah, real, in the pub and that. Right, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mutual like... respect here. You know, yeah, like, mate. And it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to own it because we can talk about other things and different, more indirect things. I'm curious to know how that in 2022, you can keep on doing what you love doing knowing full well that there's a lot of obstacles that that often uh, more more that you don't see rather than what you do see that that are there yeah to be honest i graph for me and i like seeing my own graph and i do it because i like living in that moment mm. and ultimately when i'm in that moment that is what i live for so it's a case of like more obstacles. The more obstacles there is, it just makes it. It just makes it a bit more fun because I remember the moment. And I remember saying, "Oh, who are your influences?" Well, growing up was it was obviously like Zonk, Me Rock, all them sort of things. W and B, all them sort of people. One T, all that. That's why. That's I remember seeing them. Not thinking, how did you get to there? Like for me, it was. It's always been. Not as much about what it looks like. It's been, how did you... I remember when I was 14, how did you get to there? Mm. And how did no one stop you getting there? Like, I'm very sort of, fuck the system. Because, you know what I mean? Graffiti, it's a crime. I don't view it as a crime. I'm writing on something. It's a victimless crime. Like, I'm writing. I'm literally writing on something. It is a case of someone will look at it and think, well, I don't want like what that looks like. But I'm not hurting no one doing that. So I don't personally, in my mind, view it as a crime. Obviously, don't get me wrong, they're, they're trying to put you in jail for it, they're trying to do you for it. I've been done for it before. But I don't view it as a crime. It is, mm. I'm writing on something. That's it. The ultimate fact of it is, you just don't like the fact of what it looks like. Mm. But it doesn't affect you in an actual personal way. 
the visuals of it is, yeah, you might not like it, but unfortunately, get over it. It's there, isn't it? <laughs> and at this point, we don't advocate anything goes on in the Killing Killer podcast and conversation. This is strictly for, you know, a nice little story, isn't it? Yeah? People die on this shit, so be yeah, very, very careful out there. Um, tell us some fucking stories, man. Tell us some fucking ruthlessly true stories. Do you know what? Obviously, people well, people that do know me, know me for the motorway signs and other stuff as well. But I remember I was in Birmingham, I fell off a motorway sign and I was like three quarters of the way up the motorway sign and I fell off the motorway sign. And I was laying in the old shoulder because I was three quarters of the way up it. Yeah, I was, I was a bit gone. Can't lie on that one. Um, what, you off. fucking... What's all happening? To explain that more in more detail. Well, I've done a motorway sign. I was with someone who was up there. Like, I was living in Birmingham. Drove up there with, with a graffer. I'm not going to say no names. Mm-hmm. But I up, drove up there with him. Um, done a motorway sign. Dubbed it. Standard stuff, really. Um, come down. Then they went to go... To the other thing, that people, the person it was with, who was waiting just off the motorway sign, they went and stood with them. I said, screw it, do you know what? I'm going to run over the motorway, I'm going to do the other motorway sign. So I weren't finished. And then, oh, I was, to be fair, I'd done a litre bottle of uh, Bacardi, so I weren't feeling the That's best. <laughs> weren't the best. Climbed up it, done the sign. I was three quarters away up. As I was trying to get down, I dropped off the sign on the ladder, and then I... Fell three quarters of the way down. I hit the hard shoulder. And, yeah, I just remember sitting there thinking, fuck, you fucked up, mate. Yeah. <laughs> just staring at the thing. My shoulder was a bit fucked. And I was thinking, you fucked up this time. This is your time. <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing cars go past and that. I'm just laying in the hard shoulder. I just dropped off the sign. And I was like, oh, fuck. So fucking laid there for like five minutes. I was like, ooh. Then got up, walked back across the motorway, and met them lot, and they was like, what happened? We heard you fall and hit the ground, and I was like, yeah, no, I fell off the sign, and I was like, fuck it, let's go on graphing, isn't it? Went yeah. graphing for another two hours, then drove back from Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> the you fear know. in my mind is, is that that'll be enough, bro. More stories, I want more. I want more. <laughs> Mate, I've got... Ten ton, but yeah, yeah. Like, give, give me some, give me some trackside stories. I got another rooftop one. To mm. be fair, and there was two people that I was with. Big up to you, like one of them is my good, good pal, Beyond Graph. Big up to you. You know who you are. Um, climbing the rooftop, it's quite high, like, like three stories, whatever. <laughs> climbing up a drain pipe, like anyone out there, metal drain pipes are good to climb up. Plastic ones aren't, yeah? I've learned that. <laughs> I've learned that. But went to climb on the rooftop. I've been up there before. I've been up there like three times. Um, as I'm climbing up there, I've dropped down. And then as I've dropped down off the rooftop, I've landed on a spike with both my feet. It was like a... Best way to put it, like... Like a railing, but with the little spikes at the, the top. Three, the three-pin spike. Yeah, and I've landed oh, on that, and no. one of them, like, my my left foot just caught it. It didn't really pierce it much. My right foot has embedded a, quite a bit into it. What, in a real Alan Partridge, I've just put my foot on a spike kind of shit. Oh, mate, I had to literally pull my foot off, and I had to pull my foot off the spike, and there was a hole in my foot, and there was a hole in my foot, and then I've, like, my left one was all right, but my right one, it embedded about halfway in my foot. Oh. I've pulled my foot off of it. And then I still lasted another like hour, hour and a half, hobbling about what with a hole bleeding? in my foot. Yeah, it was bleeding. And that my sock was covered in blood. Still managed to walk about for another like hour and a half, graphing and all that. And then after an hour and a half, I had to call it a day because my foot was just bleeding. Do you scars? Yeah. Huh? You got scars from it? Yeah, maybe a little bit of one on the bottom of my foot, but it, yeah, it was painful. And it, yeah, it was a lasting memory, but I lasted an hour and a half. So I was like, screw it. Do you know what? I ain't stopping, is it? Well, there's also a hole in my foot in there. I'll just carry on. I'm not stopping. <laughs> I was in the moment, wasn't I? So what can I do? <laughs> in this industrious world in which you do things, and a lot of writers do things, isn't there, are there any limits where you're just like, oh, I could have died from that? When I have their moments, it disposes me on more, to be honest. Does it? Uh, yeah, like, I'm, well, I don't know. What was it like? Is that a self-destructive um, aspect of graph? For me, it's a lot of to say, do you know what? Like, 
I will do what I'm going to do and you're not going to stop me. The system ain't going to stop me doing what I do at the end of the day. Like, people deem it that you shouldn't do what you do because you might get hurt. But ultimately, fuck yourselves, isn't it? But do you want to get hurt? don't want to get hurt, but I'm good at climbing. I enjoy climbing. Like, I'm a person, like, I, like, I used to do climbing walls. Like, I started getting to the climbing walls and all that because I like climbing. I like that. I like that thrill of being on the edge. And... And motorbikes and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love motorbikes. And it's like, ultimately, like, I'm quite big into, like, screw the system. Like, the system ain't telling me what I can and cannot do. It's, it, ultimately, laws are what people have decided that you cannot do. Like, for yeah. example, graffiti being a crime yeah. is what some people sat down however many years ago, whenever that law was brought in, yeah. that's what they deemed you, is illegal. Mm. I don't view it as illegal. Why? What's illegal? Why is it illegal? Why? Like, I don't get that. But you're, so you're, you're in will... the right house for this. This is... I'm <laughs> 100%. Honestly, I've got, I've got a lot of time for this conversation. <laughs> but I think what, what um, is more curious, uh, I think for the for public generally is that how how do you differentiate what is your cause yeah. and what is a graffiti cause like i kind of i kind of love the fact that you just you're just on a mission to s- seek out your biggest fucking thrill <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you know what i mean it's like, fuck the can like do you know what i mean it's like this yeah. is you, you fucking to to what end like if you were to go to alaska for instance, yep. and you were to call, oh, Mount Everest, you're, you're Mount Everest, yeah? Yep. What would be the first thing, the fact that you had been so excited to get to the top or that you wanted to put a reach up there? <laughs> I can't believe I'm, <laughs> I can't believe I'm asking this. But I just, to be uh, honest, they're both. Really? Yeah, both. Yeah, it'd be a bit of both because if someone told me, you can't put a, you can't put a reach at the top of, um, what's it called? Alaska, like, you know what I mean? I'd be like, well, yes, I can. Well, before before someone said to you, you can't make, reach Alaska? Top, yeah, if someone told me Everest, I could not do yeah. it, yeah, if someone told me, sorry, like, Everest, someone told me you could not do that, I'd be like, yes, I can, and I will do it. And I'll put a reach up there as well. Yeah, I'll just, I'll, yeah. For me, I'm about that point of saying what you cannot do, like, I, I will do it. That's why I'd like to do stuff that puts it in your face, because it's like, I've done that, and... That is, as a person, beyond the graph. I'm a person of, I will do what... I like to push myself as well. I like to push myself to the limit of, if I ever think, I don't know if I can get up there. And I'll be like, what do you mean you can't get up there? All right, come on, mate, and I will get up there. <laughs> is that in your head? It's yeah, like, yeah. Th- yeah, one time I remember a rooftop, I could not get up. And I was like, bosh. I was like, the night, I might have been a bit too drunk. However there was, I couldn't climb on the rooftop. I went back the next night and went and done it. Because I was like, no, nah, you ain't being defeated by a rooftop. You're not being defeated by that. You're going and you are doing it. I was like, wait a minute. So, <laughs> I just want to be clear on this. So, is there is there a moment in your head when you, you know you've had enough and you're like, in your head you're like, no, I'm, I'm definitely going to do this. But the other, the other side of you is like, no, no, you should do this. Ah, that no side kind of just doesn't really exist because I'm like when I'm like like the rooftop like I just said couldn't get up there tried I couldn't get up there probably because I drunk too much whatever and I was like oh. got home got in bed bugged me bugged me because I was like what do you mean you could not get up there what well, you can't do that and I was like do you know what like, babe, babe, <laughs> are you okay <laughs> no <laughs> fucking bugging yeah mate and I was like and it honestly really fucking it really got to me that I could really? not get up so I went the next night and I went and got up there and I was like right now you're good <laughs> I admire it I do yeah. sober man I admire him I admire it it's just it's, it's a tenaciousness that I think a lot of graffiti writers have it's just, just unstoppable drive yeah, because ultimately, when it comes to graffiti, I do it for me, isn't it? Like, so for me, it's about. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate everyone that sees my stuff, everyone that I've met, and I said, "Bosh!" Like, yeah, you get a lot of love as well. Yeah, you and it's like I, I, I do, I do like that, but and I, and I like respect that, and I love that. But ultimately, the reason I do graffiti is not for that. 
because I do it for myself. Like, and it's like, for me, it's that drive and that push. You just... Keep it moving, man. I've got so much time yeah, for that. Love my friend. I love. I love the fact. That, <laughs> I love the fact that you bring all these other aspects. Anyway, you know what it is. Killer Killer podcast. Come on, man. Oh, we keep it diverse. Keep it moving. <laughs> on one inside the place, yeah. Uh, brother, thank you so much for passing. Yeah, thank you for having me. It means a lot. And yeah, man. It's like you know what I mean. It's how it is. Yeah. <laughs> Telling the truth out here. Killer Killer Podcast, out like in was out of fashion, you know what to do, all right? Sharing is caring, don't talk to anyone else. I wouldn't. Crime don't pay, <laughs> but neither do they, all right? You stay lucky, people. Don't talk to anyone else. Peace! <laughs> <laughs> this literally has never happened before. Um, change of uh, programme, ladies and gentlemen, to say the least. Uh, on one's come back, and uh, for those of you that ain't, Watching and listening, he's currently donning a foot brace from an incident that kind of took place directly after the podcast. On one, I'd ask how you are. <laughs> what the fuck happened, dude? <laughs> oh, I'm not too bad. I'm getting there. Um, yeah, as you know, straight after the podcast, went to go do a spot, just got started, um, climbed over, climbed over, was it like the stair bits, climbed over, done what I was doing. Yeah. And then I jumped back over, but I thought I was on the lower bit of the stairs and just jumped over on it and just hit the floor and just smashed my foot to pieces. <laughs> right, so let's just put this into context, right? So you just done the podcast, all a bit a little bit wavy, all a bit excited. You went and you climbed up to the top of this area which you were gonna do a piece on. Yeah. And then from that, you climbed down a set of stairs and then jumped off the set of yeah. stairs. How high was that? Um, I don't know, 12, 15 foot maybe? Yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah, about that. And um, you went down bang like a... Yeah, it went down like a sack of shit. Really? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, you've been doing this for a long time, but I bet you didn't expect that to happen. No, I've, um, I've fractured my foot, the same foot, I fractured my ankle before when I was out painting. Um, I've done that years ago. Um... That's part of it, to be honest. It really? happens. It's just one of them ones, isn't it? So, so what, what, what breakage was there in the foot? Um, I think it was the calcaneum. That's what they call it. It's basically in my heel. There's a bone and there's some cartilage between it. I've, yeah. Where I've landed, I've smashed, like smashed on my cartilage. The two bones have pushed together, and then when it comes to it, I've had to, they've had to pull the bones back apart, take all the bits of loose bone out of my foot wow. and screw it all together, put four screws holding my foot back together. So... <laughs> what? <laughs> so, yeah, occupational hazard, I think, is the best way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot for, for what was essentially just a kind of... I mean, it's a, it's a sizable drop, but, yeah. but, you know, you guys are seasoned. Mm. Like, you know, you're blessed most days. Yeah, yeah. Mistakes happen. Sometimes I've, I've done bigger jumps, I've had worse things, and I've walked away from it completely fine. It just happens, doesn't it? Yeah. If you're going if you're gonna to do this sort of thing and just do all, do all the madness and try and have fun with it and that, you're going to have injuries. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Big time. Big time. Uh, well, you know, I think that only goes to show my point whenever I shout out people saying, you know, don't try this at home. Even the experienced and seasoned can go and get themselves a, an unhealthy uh, injury. How has this stopped your performance? Have you, have you had to kind of uh, uh, hold back a bit? Uh, when it first and I'm uh, talking about graffiti here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else I'm sure is, is blessed. <laughs> yeah, no, um, straight after my operation and all that, I had to like, sit my foot up. So I didn't manage to get out for about two months. Um, but then... I sort of fucking, I was gagging to go out, I was fucking itching. So I went just fucking local to me, done a couple of underpasses and stuff on my crutches with my cast on, and then done that, and then from that, fucking, that didn't take away the itch. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to graph more, so um, I thought I was like, fuck it, I'm going to go do fucking tracks um, on the crutches when I couldn't even put my foot on the floor. So, mm -hmm. and yeah, it turned out to be a bit of a, a bit of a mad mission, but I enjoyed myself. I had to go like up and in, up an embankment, down the side of a, like dual carriageway bit, then mm. down another embankment, cut a hole through a fence. That's cut like me size hole, so I'd get through my crutches. Mm. Then, then that's a go. Then cut through another hole. Yeah. Then was on the tracks. Um, I was just there, and then my mate was painting off a ladder. Um, sober, big up sober. 
Um, Sober, then yeah. I managed to go up the ladder. I had to hop up the ladder with one foot, get in there, caught a couple of tags and that. And yeah, then I crossing back over the tracks, I fucking dropped, fucking stacked it over the tracks. What? <laughs> but do you know what? That's fucking one of the funnest graph missions I've had in a long while. Yeah. It's like it, it, it is an addiction, because all I could think about was graphing when I thought, like when I'm laid when I was laid up. Really? Since I've done it, yeah, I was just like, I want to get out, I want to get out. Driving you mad? Yeah, it was driving me mad. I'm saying that I'm just fucking. Speak to a few people, I was like, fuck it, I want to do tracks. They're like, you can't do tracks, you're on crutches. I said, the fucking can. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, so I've done that and then ticked that from bucket list. So this happened before, just not yeah, to Yeah, I fractured my ankle when I was on the um, mm. side of the M25, on the steep embankment. And then I've climbed, gone down, climbed up the sign, graft on the motherfucker, on the motorway side and all that. As I'm climbing back up, I've slipped and slid all the way down the embankment and just hit the floor, like hit it straight. It was quite steep. Yeah. And I fractured my ankle that time. Do you think that's what aided the the sensitivity of your ankle um, to be like? No, because my ankle's now. actually fine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's my, like my heel and all that bottom part, like below the arch my ankle, and that, smashed and the arch pieces. So, Man, that is mad. That's really severe, isn't it? it well, yeah, it was a lot worse than I thought. I thought I'd be able to walk it off, but I couldn't walk, obviously. But no. I thought I'd be all right, and then yeah, I had to go to hospital. Pain was too much. Foot swelling out, and then I was like, went to hospital the next day, and then yeah, got in the cast, and then that type of operation. So I've had all that. But bless you, fucking hell, bro. <laughs> I have to say, this is. I think it's historical. It's it definitely hasn't been documented from my side or anybody that I can think of. This is the first time that there has been a before and after podcast in history where. You know, the, the decisions you make <laughs> yeah. and say you make on the podcast actually come back in a different form and we're able to document it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. actually something that's never happened before on podcast, for sh- my podcast. Yeah, I mean. no, yeah, no, it's part of graph. Like, most people, maybe not such severe injuries, but people would have had injuries. It's just part yeah, of it. Like, you're climbing it. roofs and you're doing this and... Like, I, I, well, one thing I've never done, which I'm happy, is you know the free spikes. Yeah, oh. I've no. I remember when I was younger, when I was like 15 odd, we was climbing over a fence of my house, put his hand, it's gone like right into his hand, <gasps> and fucked his hand up. But I've never done that, luckily enough. But it that's l- to some ligament damage shit, that is. That's yeah, yeah, hand, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> I ain't really about that life, man. <laughs> this is too much for me. Like, well, listen, we'll leave it there because obviously you've got a lot of, uh, you know retiring to do f- just for the short term but I'll say this much man and I've told you tell you before Kels tells you I mean don't try this at home this is a nice little story <laughs> a nice visual story um, but yeah man thanks so much for passing back through my brother that's alright no worries guy. Yeah, on one <laughs> most definitely on one BK finest hold tight Killer Killer podcast now actually out like in was out of fashion alright we'll be back in due course with the next one but you stay lucky, people. And uh, yeah, mind how you go. Nice one on one. Yeah. Thank you very much for having me. Peace. Peace.